we asked people with disabilities from different countries to share their experiences of assessing health information and sexual and reproductive health services. This is what they shared with us. The main barriers related to health information and communication is communication. Number one barrier is no accessible information in the hospital through a sign language interpreter. I am deaf and when I meet the doctor, I can't just start writing notes. It's not communication. Some doctors write, their handwritings are not clear. And again, there are some words that they may be new to us. Anytime I go to for antenatal class, no interpreter. So the nurses will explain, tell what exercise to do, which fruits to eat, what things to eat. And I'll tap the nurse. I don't understand. What are you saying? Where is the communication? The interpreter. Because I'm visually impaired, so as far as physical barriers are concerned, uh, the first barrier I experience is uh, not having proper signage in the hospitals. It's also important that consent is sought after and some form of secrecy and confidentiality is created around your conversation with the health um, service provider. For instance, I want services on maternal health and maternal delivery, screen to cancer. Uh, therefore, I need that information. How do I go about it? I need the information on family planning so that I'm able to make a, a right decision based on the right information that I'm given. So it's important that the health you know, providers devise means by which they can communicate directly with a woman or a girl with an intellectual disability such that she's able to communicate her needs by herself and also you know, state her consent because she has the rights to her body. Most disabled people don't have access to information on sexual and reproductive health. Another barrier is the perception of the health workers towards women with disabilities. They have some kind of negative attitude towards us and so they will ask many questions. Uh, why did I do this? Why am I pregnant? Why do I, why do I need the services? Once when I was pregnant, I went to the hospital and the receptionist there, she just saw me and assumed that I have come there for my eye problem. And also no access to family planning. Sometimes the nurses will not allow persons with disability to pick which family planning services they need. We do find uh, barriers. Some people give us a very bad attitude. I think in those areas, there has to be disability awareness in every person in the community, at the place of work, in the hospitals. The attitude is quite a barrier. The whole situation boils down to lack of awareness creation on health matters. It is time for this to change. The information that is being used in the hospitals or other healthcare centers needs to be in an accessible format. Right now, we are in need of more doctors who will enlighten the villagers. We need to increase awareness on the rights of and the needs of women with disabilities, both at service delivery point, at the community, and even at the family level and among women with disabilities so that they also understand their rights. So the third recommendation would be for government and these health institutions to work closely with organizations of women with disabilities. We need to go an extra mile to ensure that all the policies in relation to reproductive health are well implemented, well disseminated, they are known by everybody. The right of people with disabilities to enjoy the highest attainable standard of health must be guaranteed. Leave no one behind. Leave no one behind. Leave no one behind. Let's build together a disability inclusive health sector. <laughs>